Hoi there, it's Skyward Shield. Welcome to the final football talks of the 2014-2015 regular season. I am joined by Bill. Say hello, Bill. Hello? Oh my god, it's a sad day. It is a sad day, but it should be a little happy at the same time. We pulled through, we actually finished the, po the podcast season. Yep, the whole year. It's amazing. I didn't have to miss any time with sickness or any of that other stuff. I thought I was going to miss the day. But oh. we, we, we were going to pull it through. We just need to finish this and then we're officially done. So, Bill, oh. we're going to jump in right away and talk about Super Bowl 49. Super Bowl 49. Oh, my God. Where to even begin? Well... I'll, I'll start at the beginning. We'll just start at the beginning. Uh, the the national anthem was I I didn't really like it. Was uh, a little too drawn out for its own good. Uh, let's be fair. No matter where you go, even if it's sports or not, people draw out that damn anthem. If I had to sing it, I would sing at the proper pace. At the right tempo, I should say, like how it's supposed to be. But people drag it out to make themselves stand but out a little I'll, more. I'll tell you the thing that I, the, the the thing that I wasn't fond of was "America the Beautiful" by John Legend. Oh my God, what did he do to that song? Was it like a? Like, I wasn't sure if it was a real song or a, the real song or the remix or a remix. <laughs> remix. <laughs> Bill, let's move on to the actual game. Oh man, first quarter. What? first quarter of that game, the first quarter, Tom Brady and the Patriots really got going and sh kind of kind of took control of the first half. And the first quarter... There was the, no score. There was no score, but the Patriots asserted themselves. They asserted their will against the uh, Seattle Seahawks defense. And really, no team had done that besides maybe Green Bay and Dallas. And Dallas, but in in the weeks prior after oh, that. Oh, oh, I thought I mean like the whole season. The only teams I can think of were Green Bay at the very end, though they choked, and then Dallas that beat them. I don't know about the Kansas City because that was a, just a defensive slugfest, and it could have been. A, it was a coin flip game or a toss up. But I'll, continue. I'll, I'll put it this, uh, but New England asserted themselves, but they asserted themselves in the way I thought they would assert themselves, and they started throwing the football around the field. And the way to, I feel like the Legion of Boom is is great as long as your pa their pass rush gets to their quarterback, like any like any corners. If you're if you're game if you're giving the opposing quarterback time to look at the field, it's a very long day. Now, with um, that, there is an example actually. Uh, oh, no, there is. Nice. I have an example in mind. That, um, look at Dallas's defense. I won't lie. I don't think the secondary is the best, but if the quarterback is pressured, usually, you know how I mentioned that they have to pressure the quarterback only with the score, not with themselves. You know what I mean? Right. That's what they needed to do to Rodgers, but they couldn't pick him off. They gave Somehow, sometimes they gave him time. But if you put a... Uh, that was the only way to get Brady, really, except for maybe... What's his face? That Bennett, Burnett guy on yeah. the Seahawks? Yeah, Michael Bennett. He was the only real pass rush threat, but even so, it was just one player, but he was still a threat. You know what I mean? You he, yeah, it's the defense, the defensive end, the defensive players, like the on the defensive line and the secondary have to complement each other. They do. Which they really I can, do. I'm pretty sure Seattle's gonna go for a defensive end too, because if they get a better, like another defensive player that's maybe just as big a threat as Bennett, well, that's the Legion of Boom is gonna have a better year. Yeah, it, for 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 the Seahawks defense. It's boomer bust, really. You yeah. know, and I I I feel like the defense came out and didn't play their best game. 
did the CL defense. If CL was on top of their game, it would have been it would have been an all time classic. To be fair, these Seahawks wings were battered and bruised. Yeah, but l like I mean, it was found out that after, but it was found out that uh, Richard Sherman was playing through an elbow injury that does not require Tommy John surgery. Wow. You know? So I mean, but the defense. The defense got attacked in the first quarter, and New England felt them out perfectly. They, CL kicked the ball off to New England in in the first half, and I felt like that that helped New England settle down and establish a rhythm. And establishing a rhythm in the Super Bowl is paramount because everything's different in the Super Bowl. The hype is magnified. Even if you've been in the Super Bowl, you still feel those nerves. And they came out and played, and they got they got to the ability they to were calm down. I think they were more so prepared for if Seattle won the toss. Normally, if the Patriots get the like they win the toss, they always defer. Yes. They want Tom Brady to get a little more like rested up, or the offense to be a little more prepared. But they weren't stupid, and they were ready in case the Seahawks want, because the Seahawks know that, that or everybody really knows that uh, New England likes to kick like to kick the ball off first. They like receiving in the second half, so like, oh, maybe if we make them get the ball first, it'll put them on their toes. Well, kind of. I mean, you got that one pick in that big drive they made that could have been a touchdown. Right. But overall, the first quarter, it, it was more a feeling out process for the New England Patriots offense, and what didn't work was the Seattle offense. The Seattle offense. It, it took offense. a while to settle in, but when it did, holy shit, it exploded. So do we transition to the second quarter? Yeah. Uh, now, speaking of that explosion, Russell Wilson in the second quarter just went off. Uh, he's a. I think he's a good quarterback. He's a good mobile quarterback. Cause, well, he'd be basically what RJ three would have been if people didn't overhype him and he didn't get injured all the time. I I'll be honest. As much as I don't care about him, I think him as long as he never got injured, he would probably still be playing, or he wouldn't even be in discussion for uh, being switched out. You know what I mean? But those injuries just haunt him, and well, he was just overrated. I feel like, one in one respect, his rookie year inflated his ego. Ah, uh, yeah, it inflates a lot of people. Thankfully, Russell Wilson didn't have that big year. Well, because it he didn't play in his rookie year, did he? Or he all played, of it? He he played in his rookie year. But did he play made, all sixteen games? I don't think he started from the beginning. I think he started from. The I thought beginning. he. Yeah. I thought he started like halfway through. He won. He won the job in uh, preseason that year. Okay. okay. And then Matt Flynn, Matt Flynn, threw a little fit about it and left the Seahawks. And now he's with. Uh, he's a backup to Aaron Rodgers. Again. Yep. <laughs> it comes full circle. But um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I don't think I know this happened later, but just get it out of the way now. I don't think anyone can contain Russell Wilson because, like, when you think you have him, you don't. He's too mobile. I'm, I know that there's others like uh, Kaepernick and uh, Cam Newton, and Cam can run, but I just don't think he has that. Uh, he can't do those good moves, like spin moves and and just sudden jerks of uh, or changes of direction like uh, Russell can. I think right. Russell is the literal. A, he's the perfect example of a running quarterback. Usually I would have thought of Cam, but now I'm starting to think of Russell because I can't think of anybody. I don't even know if Watt can catch him. If there's enough open field, I don't even think Watt can get him. Right. But, I mean, probably... I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. I thought New England did a good job in containing him, actually. Yeah, but when he was forced to run... They had nothing to do. They could not even their fastest player could catch him. I mean, it's it's a difficult proposition, but I mean, even when he did take off, 
it was very few and far between, and that's that's you gotta let him get. He's not get his yards. It's just how many yards are you gonna give up, and how many of those big chunk plays are you gonna give up to him? They gave if up at least two first downs to him, and I think both of those those times, which were led to points. Yeah, so and if you don't let him get the first down, they're not gonna score. Exactly. And that that's part of my uh, that's part of my thinking for my game plan for the the uh, the New England Patriots when we previewed the uh, Super Bowl is you have to contain Russell Wilson because if you contain Russell Wilson, you contain Marshawn Lynch and Marshawn Marshawn had an ama- had a pretty good game against the Patriots defense. Uh, he was he got some really hard runs off on the Patriots defense. They didn't make it easy on him. Yeah, they did not, but there were times where he tore through them. I think it was at the, the start of the second half. He was tearing through them. I think it oh, was yeah. that drive where he himself ran in for a touchdown. And I yes. and I was thinking, "Oh no, this is how it's going to end." Right. But no, they they I when I remember when they put up three points. I think I was like, if these guys put up four po- or seven points, I don't know if New England can come back. But they held them to three, and then New England kept their they kept their cool. But I know I'm transitioning to the the third quarter too soon. But let's at least go to the final moments of the second quarter, where Patriots just scored a touchdown, and you would think, okay. All that uh, Seattle will do is try and get into the into field goal range and just get how she get to kick one. I think I think what was done there with Hauschka, uh with Seattle, they did a first down run, and if they picked up a first down, they were going to uh, try for the field goal or a score of any kind. And if he was stopped behind the line, uh, behind the first down marker, and even if he got, like, seven or eight yards, I feel like they were going to kneel it and go to halftime and want the football in the second half. Yeah, because so I was thinking, why it... don't you just get three points, you're going to get the ball back. But no, they, but... they went for it. That was a... When you think about it, we call the final play, which we'll get to later, a bad play, but this one was considered ingenious to some. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind I mean, of a weird double standard. I still thought it was way too risky. I would not have gone for it. I mean, if if I was in the same shoes as uh, as uh, Peter uh, Pete Carroll, and I had to make a decision with six seconds left, and I was that close, and I would probably have kicked the field goal, knowing that I've got the uh, football in the second half to start with. Yeah, same here. I I was I do the same, but hey, you gotta take risks, and it paid off. But I, it's like when we talk about, and I think of the final play being the, they both ended the same way. They were trying to go for a short throw at the end of the game with little time left. Yeah. The first time it worked, but the second time it didn't, because it's like but, you can't fool New England twice. The the player that established the greatest rhythm in the second quarter, Tom Brady. Yeah. Oh, but before you go, before we move on to the third quarter, uh, um, I was gonna say, what's that player? The one that kept catching those deep balls, and he didn't have anything coming in from the regular season. Oh, Chris Chris Matthews. Yeah. If it, okay, if Seattle won. I would have been disappointed if he didn't get the MVP award. Out of I all mean, the games to break out, you choose the Super Bowl. He he never re- he made his first reception in the Super Bowl. Exactly. Only, only the third player to ever have that happen. Exactly. And if he and if they won, I would have been very disappointed they didn't give him that MVP award. He deserved it. Catching deep balls like that and then uh, getting a touchdown too, which was I mean, which was essential for setting up how the uh, second half would be. Yeah, I mean, second half we'll get to in a second. But the player with the best rhythm, I felt, was Brady. He got into a rhythm, and once he got into that rhythm, the first quarter helped set it up. But that second quarter is when he exploded, 
and he was making throws all over the place, and they attacked the Seahawks' defense how it needs to be attacked. In the middle of the field, and you attack that defense in the middle, and force them to come inside, and then just start hitting them with deep passes. Yeah, um, really, it should have been 17 to 21. Uh, 17 or 21 to 14, but... Yeah, it was that he Brady was really put under pressure when he threw those picks. They were coming for him. Yeah, that sometimes that offensive line did not know who to block. Yeah, that that the stunts were giving the rookie center an issue. But think of it this way: they're starting a rookie center in the Super Bowl. Well, yeah, that rookie proved some worth, but um, oh. you can only hope he gets better. Oh yeah, but, uh, um, and he will. Sh- should we transition to the third quarter now? Oh man, the third quarter. Third quarter is really, really was starting to become a, a nail biter for Patriots fans. Because yes. Seattle exploded again. They continued on their momentum. I I think there was nothing wrong with what Seattle did in the third quarter. They absolutely had that. Where the second quarter, they didn't let the Patriots feel like they had the momentum. They kept it in balance, literally with a 14-14 tied game. But they took it. They took over, and it was. Uh, how did it end the third quarter? It was a twenty-one to it twenty-four. Was, it was twenty-four fourteen. Okay, then New England just came back in the fourth. But we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Now, the third the third quarter was dominated by huge passing plays to Chris Matthews. He was getting all sorts of passing plays in that quarter, and, and then I, I think mean, Doug Baldwin caught that third, their final touchdown of the game. Yeah, I think Doug Baldwin. Yeah, he got a flag because he he made it look like he shit out a ball. He was implying that like the the Patriots were about to lay the biggest egg. He, it, it really. <laughs> he got a flag for that, which well, yeah, you kind of do get a flag for doing something like that. That's taunting. I mean, and and another incident of taunting that happened during that quarter was when uh, Revis got beat, and Richard Sherman was on the sideline taunting the, uh, on the camera with the number two and the four, etc. Yeah, remember that. Don't explain what your your thoughts on that were yet, Bill. Just remember. Oh, I'm the- not. Yeah, save it for later. But yeah, the good thing you brought it up now. I remember that. It's like I was like, "Oh, come on, man." I mean, he 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 didn't have to do that. But we'll get m- into more in depth. He wouldn't on have done it if the camera wasn't there. You know, the cam. There's always a camera around Sherman. Oh yeah. He's just one of those players. He's like Dez or Aaron Rodgers. People always want to see them and what they're thinking or what they're doing. There's always a camera, especially when Rodgers is injured. Oh, God. Especially when Rodgers is coming back onto the field, so that way he can get a hero's welcome from Lambeau Field and, uh, you know, be made Don't even get the, me started. You know, when the, the, the Cheeseheads better be fucking pleased that he won their MVP award. Still didn't go to the Super Bowl, but hey. But um, anyway, so do you have anything else to say about the third quarter? Because it was really uh, one but, another slip-up or another interception by Brady, and like, Seattle just... C- controlling everything in the third. Seattle, Seattle had a lot of momentum, and I felt that momentum was helped by that call to go for it at the end, because Seattle felt like they could do no wrong, and they 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 scored ten points, and they they had New England on the ropes. They at did. The end of the third it quarter. really felt like it was if they scored any more points, it felt like oh no, these guys are. They're not gonna get. They're not gonna come back. It'll be too big of a hurdle to to jump. But fourth quarter time. Uh, was it now when Gronk got a deep ball from the, on the side? I'm pretty sure it is. Gronk in the got a, a because he, they he uh, Brady threw th- two deep balls in. The first one he missed, but the second yep. one he got easily, perfect in his hands. He outran. Who did he outrun? I don't even know. I don't know if it was Earl Thomas. I don't think it was Sherman. I would recognize it along here. I want to say it was Earl Thomas or Chancellor. It might have been Chancellor because Chancellor usually kept an eye on on Gronk. 
Yeah. And that was the that was the uh, the big momentum swing for New England. If they couldn't put up any points, it was like there's no way you're coming back either. With that. Right. So because they could not contain uh, Marshawn Lynch in the third quarter, and because he was starting to build up and take off on his own. Yep. But um. Then uh, who, the final touchdown was from Edel for was to Edelman. Correct. Or Amendola. It was one of those two. I think both of them scored one. I think the last the last one in the fourth quarter was Edelman. Okay, because I think Amendola caught the first one. Yeah. But Amendola was the first one, and then it was uh, because he spun the football down angrily after he caught it mm-hmm. to make it 21-24. Then Edelman caught the second one to make it 28 28- the 24. Remember that in score, because I have a fun fact to mention about that, but <laughs> I think you already know what it is, Bill, but well, do you, well, when when, it's the, when we talk about the end... I, I, I saw the tweet. Oh, you it. saw it. Yeah, everybody saw it. Then let's just get out of the way now. Matt, the Madden NFL, the game, Matt, or Madden 15, predicted the, the Super Bowl score 28-24. Yup. And which is really creepy if you think about it. Yeah, the, what's going to be creepier is who gets on the logo now, or who gets on the cover because of what you told me. No I, man, I really, don't. I really hope it's Rogers <laughs> or Jordy Nelson. Just put a Green Bay Packer on there. Some, How about both of them? Why not? How about both Green Bay Packers? How about Green Bay way? and Seattle? Because the NFC Championship game was so great. Let's honor it with uh with uh. Aaron Rodgers and some some Seattle player. I don't know. I I get the feeling they're gonna put Marshawn Lynch or Aaron Rodgers. But Marshawn Lynch and just on the cover on the side of the cover man and says, I'm just here so that way I won't get fined. <laughs> uh yeah. But um actually he was on a video with, or on Conan O'Brien's show and he was a lot more talkative. Yeah, because Conan because you have to be talkative on there, or you're not going to get invited back ever again. <laughs> or get even paid, or get those Skittles. He's like, I'm just here to talk. I'm only talking because there's Skittles near me. <laughs> I remember when Conan saw one of the fatalities. Marshawn's like, here, taste the rainbow. <laughs> I would just, if that were me, I would just, just jerk my hand into that bag, grabbed as many Skittles as I could, just shove them all in my mouth. It's like, if that were horrifying to get you, that wasn't because I'm used to Mortal Kombat, but not everybody's played the newer Mortal Kombats. But to be, to be fair, I, I enjoy, I enjoyed, I enjoy Marshawn Lynch and him not talking to the media because it's, it, it's amazing to me. I oh, like I it. like when he's not talking to the media and talking to other people like Conan because then you see yeah, this guy just doesn't fucking care about the media. He'll care about everybody else. But and then he likes Mario Kart. He likes to play as Toad. Funny enough, Nintendo tweeted to him about that cuz they found out. We heard nice. they're like, "We heard you like playing as Toad." Nice. Heck yeah, man. Well, of course, they're fans of Seattle cuz they live there. Their headquarters is near near there. Beast Mode is a fan of Toad. Beast Toad. God damn it, Bill. No, oh, go home. Get out. <laughs> Get out. That's that's the that's it. That's the whole podcast. We're done. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, so speaking of Marshawn, let's go to the final drive. Oh, that the final drive. drive. I I feel sorry for Seattle fans. But you no, know, we must we must talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Now, it two amazing things in that drive. You talk about the first one. I'm the talking first about the second one. Is the heave ho to Jermaine Curse, and the craziest thing happened where the ball bounced off of his chest, bounced off his lap, went up his leg. And it landed in his chest and he caught it. And then he gets up and the New England player pushes him out of bounds. A miraculous catch. One of those one of those crazy catches you couldn't do in a million years. 
but it just so happens to happen. The, that's I, that's I a once every few years type of catch. Every once yeah. in a while, you'll get one of those catches. I remember, I think it was three years ago where something like that happened. Not in the Super Bowl. I think it was just a regular season game, but it's happened before. Don't be too surprised. Oh, I was. You. Oh, there's a good clip out there. You, it's Brett Favre and another Green Bay Packer guy. Oh my God, I don't remember who it is, but he caught. He 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 had a similar catch to the Jermaine Curse catch. Yeah, but anyway, it's. Sh shall I move on to the final play? Oh my God, yes. Okay, so it was second and goal. About 20 seconds left. New England was on the verge of lo of losing because you knew Seattle, if they ran it with Marshawn Lynch, they probably would have had it in the bag. And they were letting that clock drain because they had timeouts if they needed them. But they wanted to give New England little time as possible if that happened. Or if they, if they scored. Right. And Russell Wilson tried to throw the ball. And it was picked off by an undrafted yeah. rookie. I believe he was a rookie. In the end zone. In the end zone, but he went out. I understand that that's a that's a rookie mistake. I can understand that. He tried to run out. If you catch a ball, intercept a ball in the end zone, you want to kneel to prevent problems like New, what New England was facing, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I don't blame the kid, dude. You you picked off what would have been sealing your fate and making you lose the game. I, it's understandable what he did. But my God. You do not know how much that was needed. Patriots fans' hearts, like mine, dropped. We thought it were it was all over, but no. Yep. It, that is a game changer. That is a game finisher. Yep. I, I mean, if he, if he didn't pick it off, that would have went into that Seahawks' hands, and Seattle would have won. That was the game-winning throw, essentially. Whoever yep. caught that ball, his team would win the game. Yep, and. Uh, now, I'm going to say my thoughts on this, on that play. Seattle should have, should have ran the football. But it's idiotic of the Seattle offensive coordinator, David, uh, Dave, um, uh, uh, Blevin, or Ble whatever the, stu uh, whatever the guy's name is, but the, the offensive coordinator basically threw the wide receiver on that route under the bus. How about this? Call a better play. You are 20 seconds away from winning the Super Bowl. You have three downs to get it into the end zone, and you have all your timeouts left. I think they Why had two. Aren't you... But yeah. Or two. Yeah, continue. You have, you have two left. If you don't get it on second down... You call your timeout. Go for it on third down. Don't get it. You got fourth down, and it, win or lose, you're not gonna get another down anyway. So, I I just my my thoughts are, you have the best one of the best running backs in the league, and. He could go over the top. He could go to the side. He could go any direction, and you're running it. Uh, you're throwing it down the middle, and the the Patriots player made the play of his life. That was the play of his life, man. You can tell. He could tell. He knew that was the greatest thing he could have ever done in that whole game. I mean, seriously, play. Players m become legendary because of plays like that. Like Butler, you'll always remember the Butler interception in the end zone. That's what the game the is going to be called. Super Bowl Forty Nine is just going to be called the interception. Yep, the interception. The Butler the, interception. I mean, the Butler did it. It's always the Butler who does stuff in freaking murder mysteries. It, it, the butler came in and murdered the Seahawks Super Bowl chances. It, th he came in and swooped in and took that game away. And the best part of that was the reaction of Richard Sherman. 
It's coming full circle. He 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 went aw oh, man and he looked like he was on cry. Now this now think of this. Two uh, a quarter ago, you were mocking people on camera, you know. Yep. And now you're going to cry that you lost the Super Bowl. Get the hell out of here. Now, here's where the Seattle defense really ruined their reputation and ruined their group as a team, a really bad team. Bill didn't see it. I saw it. I was seeing many tweets of people saying, like, wow, these guys are sore losers and shit. Because, because remember what I mentioned about how Butler ran out of uh, the end zone. If he took a knee there, which was, again, a rookie mistake, and I totally understand why he did that, but... They couldn't kneel because if they kneeled, they would have had to, it would have been a safety, and they would have got a, the ball back, and they would have had to just try and get a field goal. Right. So there was going to be one play from New England just to try and get out and try not to get a safety. Right. But this is where things really broke down. You could feel Seattle's defense breaking down emotionally. Seattle jumped off sides. First they jumped off sides. Now the Patriots can kneel with no worries. But then came the lineup to take the knee. Note, if you notice, if you if you see a video, there's a video on the NFL site, and if you pause the video at the beginning, right as you see them on the screen, you'll notice how all the, uh, the, um, the Seahawks are scrunched up together like they're ready to j pounce at somebody. Who are they looking at, Brady? Yep. They were going to try and jump Brady to make him maybe drop the ball or just to get a free hit. We don't know. I don't know what they think, so I'm not going to make an assumption. But what I do know is they charged in anyway. They did not do the uh, attempt to charge in, but just stop like how a normal kneeling should be. No. They just charged, and the players and other players didn't like that. They tried to charge at Gronkowski, which picking a fight with uh, Gronkowski is like trying to pick a fight with Watt, since they're essentially the same build and shit and the greatest at their position you don't want you don't want to fuck with him you don't want to fuck with Gronkowski you saw that one of the defensive players I forget who it was try to pick a fight with Gronkowski it's like do you think that's a smart idea not just in general like why would you fight a football player but like him but why would you fight in the Super Bowl because you lost you know what I mean right I I, I know this is come bad coming from a Patriots fan so like I'm mocking Seattle fans but just think about it did they really have to do that because they lost? You know what I mean? I I always my motto was always win with respect or win with class and lose with class. And winning with class, CL did really well. They won with a lot of class last year. They they did good. I mean, they were they destroyed the Broncos and won that handily. At the end of the game, that could, that game could have easily been 60 to whatever. But they played a very classy game not to embarrass the Broncos in the Super Bowl, even though the Broncos were getting embarrassed very easily. Yeah. But they did not lose with class. They, they played very... Well, Seattle not, is full of emotional players. I don't mean emotional in a negative way. Because right. there's nothing wrong I, with being an emotional player or a person. It's how you are. Right. No, what I I would like to have a bunch of fiery guys like CL has. It's having fu uh, the fire but knowing the situation. You're not going to change the situation. If The only thing that's going to change the situation is if Brady fumbles the exchange. That's the only thing that's going to change the situation. He's not going to fumble that. But... And, Oh. You you can make sure and he'll make sure that he's not get that football in his hands any way possible. Who was the player that got ejected though? There was, it, I have he, I have no I idea. think he got a one year suspension too. No wait. I think it was Earl Thomas. I don't I doubt that he would get a suspension for that long. It was a that. it was one of the it was, I think it was a secondary player. In fact, I'm going to go look it up. But um, but continue, Bill. This they they 
What I feel like is that they're still a young team, so they got over emotional and, you know, let everything out. But if it was the Lions that were doing oh, that, oh, I know who it was. Bowl, they... It was uh, Bruce Irvin for the Sia. With the oh, Seattle so a linebacker. Yeah, it was a linebacker, so. Isn't that crazy? Yep. I, I believe he. I think he will get suspended for a year. That's what they were saying. I don't know if that's true, but... I mean, if you do a fight, it does come with a suspension, but I don't know if it'll be a year. Some are saying that, it's a one game, but that that will be sorted out someday in the future. I'm pretty sure it'll be a one game. By the way, that. once we're done with talking about this, before we jump into the Super Bowl, I have one little thing to talk about with Deflategate, just to get it sealed up, because I have... I found something that happened a couple days ago that further proves my point about how they focus so much on what New England did, even though there are other teams that could be doing bad, but no, they're not caring. Oh, not a peep. Oh, oh I, I, I know what you're going to talk about. All right, but let's just let's just wrap up the Super Bowl. But those players, I Bruce Irvin shouldn't have threw that punch. I think he hit Gronkowski. I want to say it was him that hit Gronkowski. If not, he hit some other player. He had, That's not a smart idea. Didn't I just say? It's not a... That's like how they say in a video, and I quote, messing with J.J. Watt is a terrible idea. But the same will be said with Gronkowski, because I say they're essentially the same player, but on opposing sides. Gronk's a bad man. You don't want to screw with him. Oh, yeah, it's like it's like you're trying to pick a fight with some legendary boxer. I don't care how tough you think you are. That's a really bad idea, messing with a professional athlete who's in a league of his own in that league. But Yeah, I mean... Uh, but anyway, so enough of the fight. Ceremony. Ceremony was... traditional. I mean, it was, it was really well done. Uh, I, Dan Patrick uh, asked uh, Julian Edelman how the... How he felt, how it felt again, and uh, Julian Edelman on national television said that he never won one before, so he wouldn't know how it feels. Oh yeah, well, because <laughs> I think they came when he was with the team. That was when they lost to the Giants. <laughs> he goes, "How does it feel again?" And he's like, "I wouldn't are, know how it feels." Are you sure you're not thinking of Amendola? <laughs> Even Amendola's never won one. Yeah, it's like, well, I think you're asking the wrong player. I mean, <laughs> real, I, I just, Edelman cracked me up with that. And he, uh, but overall, the overall, um, the overall uh, ceremony was the traditional ceremony, and it was it was well done, like they always do. Yeah. But I want to say this one last thing. I thought um, I was I was cool. I was, I, mean, I was not surprised that Brady won the MVP award because I mean he very well earned it. But fifty passing attempts in a Super Bowl. Yeah, and he did pretty well against the Legion of Boom, so I give him credit. But anyway, I have to rework my favorite games of all time because who would have thought in the same season where I have two of the best games I've ever lived to see of all time and they were back to back essentially not exactly but you know what I mean the yeah. NFC championship with Seattle and yep. then the Patriots cha uh, Su Se Seattle Super Bowl the I'll, I'll put it this way that was probably the best Super Bowl I've ever watched that's the best Super Bowl I've lived to watch I'm not going to count ones that happened before either A I was smart enough to remember things on my own without never forgetting, or B, that I wasn't born when they when they aired. You know what I mean? I'm talking about the ones that have aired during my lifetime. I'm not going to count right. those. Like, as much as I want to say the Miami, the Dolphins Chargers playoff game, I think it was in the 70s. I think that was when Dan Marino was around, maybe. And, that uh, was the 80s. So. Yeah. Um, I think it was 82. And that that was a divi uh, a divisional round, I think, that went Maybe into overtime. It might have been '83 because Dan Marino was drafted in '83, and then they okay. went to Super Bowl that year. Okay, maybe I don't remember the year then, but it was at some point they played the Chargers. It was the best game, but I won't count it as my personal best. 
that because I didn't live through it. Does that make any sense? Right, right. I mean, you can only you can only go and say what was greatest game. If I can, if I looked at all, it. if I looked at the games of the past and made a list on that, I could do that. Sure, but I'm just gonna count the ones. I mean, like like in World Series, the for baseball. You can only list the ones that you've seen, and I would say Game Six of the Texas Rangers playing the um, San Fran Giants or Don't speak of that or St. Louis. No, St. Louis. It was St. Louis Cardinals. Against, yeah. St. Don't Louis, speak game of that six, game to me. The one out game that that that's probably the greatest World Series game ever played. Don't speak of that to me. <laughs> I know. I I don't mean to bring up that that <laughs> that th th those World Series where the Rangers went back to back felt like when the first time the uh, Miami Heat played the Spurs. Obviously, the Spurs had their revenge the next year and made LeBron go back to Cleveland. But yeah. Anyway, um, what are the odds? Like, as much as I'm not a fan of Seattle, I gotta say, isn't that amazing? How you're the two games in a row that you were in are in my top five favorite games I've ever saw. Yep. And I gotta say, in overall, this game, this is a a game Seattle will never forget. Even worse than uh, than <laughs> Green Bay. And that's because I give Green Bay crap. They should have won that if they didn't run the ball like they should. I'm gonna keep throwing because I'm Aaron Rodgers. If you if you ever ask any professional athlete the games that they remember the most and you say, if you give them a championship year that they had a championship or a year that they lost a championship they will remember the year they lost the championship more because of what happened and why they failed yep and that's cuz green bay knows they could have won that they should have won that but they let it go in the last 5 minutes they eased green, up too much green bay is going to be bitter about their season detroit's going to be bitter about their season dallas is going to be bitter about their season oh, and if it looks like it's going to be a fucking bloodbath there's going to be four very bitter teams in the NFC that have a chip on their shoulder and are Well, going one's to be always had a chip on their shoulder, and they, they as much as they want to say they don't have it, they do. And that, or actually they say they do, but really, you know what I mean, like Seattle, if they won the Super Bowl, I did not want to see any Seattle fan or player say, oh, the world's against us, we're the only good... Like we only we're the only ones that believe in ourselves. Like what Doug Baldwin was saying, if you won two championships in a row, or in the past few years, I don't think you can tell me that you have no fans or nobody I, believes you. Bandwagoning is a thing. They they're they're wide receivers for CL. If you want if you want to paint the picture of why they lost, is they have no offense. They've got a a good running quarterback, the greatest one to me, the greatest running they quarterback. Have, they have the Russell Wilson, and uh, they have Marshawn Lynch, and then they have a bunch of nobodies for just wide just Doug Baldwin. I think there's another. There's a tight end named Wilson who's make, shaping up into something good. But you know, if, if you he's... put du if if you put Doug Baldwin on the Dallas Cowboys, he'd be a third on the depth chart. Probably behind behind Dez and behind Terrence Williams. And, you oh, put him on so Detroit. Actually, he would be by that logic, wouldn't he be the fourth? Because Gavin Escobar is the third. Gavin Escobar is a tight end. Oh, he's a tight end. Yep. They have a lot of tight ends. Yeah, they got Wynn, They got Escobar. So he's out. They have too many I mean, offensive weapons. I mean, I would. I to be fair, I think even Cole Beasley would be ahead of. Uh, Doug Baldwin on the. Um, I know. I know that Dallas. Escobar is. A, now that you point out to me, Escobar is a tight end. I still think he'd prioritize over uh over um Doug Baldwin but anyway so <laughs> i mean see see what they're working with and wide receiver they're going to draft a wide receiver or a defensive end they, in the first round they need someone that's tall fast and a freakish athlete they can't they cannot they cannot have a Doug Baldwin lead their team in receiving they missed now think if they have Golden Tate and Percy Harvin still there? And just subtract Percy Harvin. And they re-sign Golden Tate? They have good enough. They have good enough to win it all. 
they would have been good enough to m play against New England's defense. That that defense stifled those wide receivers. If it took a no, uh, it took a nobody to come out of the shadows to beat a five eight corner, and he was six foot five. And that's really the only reason why he was playing really well. Yeah. Anyway, so Seattle's gonna keep that sh the chip on sh the shoulder attitude. If not, they're gonna add another one because of this loss. Now they're gonna keep spreading that we that nobody is is for us. And well, they might not be far off from the truth, considering how they ended that game. I mean, if anyone has that chip, that's Detroit. I mean, we got literally hosed by referees. Uh, they hosed themselves, but yeah, I get you. We'll, we'll have to wait and see till next year. No, the, I, I, the it's gonna be an interesting year. It'll be an interesting year. I told you that this in the next five years, the AFC is gonna win the. Uh, championship three out of five times and looks like here's number one number two number two or three is going to be Indy because I think Andrew Luck has to win a Super they, Bowl as much as I hate saying that they, they need a defense that that defense was god off yeah that's um yeah but we'll have I don't want I like it that way let's I wanted to say that way but yeah because I, I okay if we know we I know where Super Bowl fifty and fifty one are. Fifty's gonna be in the San Francisco Bay Area. Or I'm assuming where San Fran's new stadium is. And yeah. Super Bowl fifty one, guess where it's gonna be, Bill? Houston. Houston, Bill. Two years I don't want Dal I don't want Dallas winning the Super Bowl next year. I'll be okay with Detroit winning. But next year I'm sorry, Bill, but I'm gonna have to hope Detroit doesn't go after that because I want Dallas and Houston for a Texas shootout Super Bowl in Texas. Bill, I'm sorry, but I think even you would want that to happen. I, I want, I want the Detroit Lions to become a dynasty. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill, but I need to see my my fantasy they, realized. It needs to be realized. I want, I want the Lions to become a dynasty. The unlikely dynasty and then <laughs> then we will get the respect we deserve I, I want Houston to get the respect they're fighting back for what they lost when they were the Oilers like when they should have they should have beat the Bills and they should have played Dallas in the Super Bowl that would have been my Texas fantasy come before I was even born I think no I think I was born already for that or not I don't remember anyway I, I'm, but Bill, I'm, I hate to say it, I want Texas, Houston to go to the 51 Super Bowl because then it's like with Arizona where they could have been if they didn't lose Carson Palmer. It would have probably been them going to the Super Bowl instead of uh, Seattle. You're right. I mean, it, you know what really pains me to see what? is a list of teams that haven't won championships in every sport, and the Lions are on the list in that you can see at 50 plus years now that they haven't won a title Houston's young but if you count the Oilers it has been it has been a long time yeah so but that Houston I don't think Houston besides the Rockets have won a title wait what about the baseball team surely the Detroit Tigers should have won one Oh, my Tigers, yes. Well, I thought you were talking, talking about, about uh, you're talking about I'm cities. talking I'm talking Houston. No, I'm t well, you're saying no earlier you're saying not no one in Detroit won a title. Oh, D oh, Detroit. The the team with the fewest titles right now is uh the Detroit Pistons, but the sport overall is young. Oh, well, yeah. But um what am I going to say? Okay, so I think that's all we can we that, that yeah. needs to talk about the Super Bowl. But next year's going to be in San Fran, but I don't think the 49ers will have enough time. I think they're going to go through. I think they'll might be nine and seven. As much as I don't want that to happen, but because they're going to be in a lot of growing pains and adjusting, like Houston. Oh, San Fran, they could go away. Well, you're going to be playing them, but remember, Bill. You're he, not to me as good. Yeah. I I actually want the Rams to be better. I like I actually like the Rams because they're the underdog team. I know they won to, one before, but still. To be fair, I don't think Arizona's be is going to be as good as they were this year. Why? Uh, they they're 
Carson Palmer's going to be a year older, and you never know if he's going to have nerve issues. Uh, I mean, their defense is going to be the same. And while that's a good thing, it could also not be a good thing. And, I mean, Larry Fitzgerald has only so many more years in I the I think game. they might cut him off. They can't afford him. Like, with their whole thing with you saying about Andre Johnson, it was like, no way. The only player, the uh, only veteran player I see going is Fitzgerald. They can't, yeah. they, with the, I think the salary cap might actually screw the Cardinals over this year, if I recall correctly. But anyway, let's move on to the, uh, to the final grade. Okay. Bill, it's a I will let you begin with this, with the final grading. Now, New England's final grading. Offense. I am giving an A. The offense was very balanced this year. First time it's been really balanced. I think it had growing pains in the beginning of the season because they didn't have the balance. Yeah. They just had the pass. Which, if you well, what? To be fair, to be fair, they didn't have Gronkowski at the very beginning either. Yeah, but even so, they were mostly sticking to the pass, and they and those two teams they lost to. Uh, the Dolphins and the Chiefs, they were great pass-rushing teams at the beginning of the season. You saw when the Miami Dolphins played teams at the beginning. They even gave Denver a run for their money before Denver just bombed. Right. And Denver, and playing in Denver is still a hard thing. Even though Andrew Luck decimated the the Broncos in the playoffs, it wasn't an easy win because Denver is is just a very harsh environment yeah. to play in. Cause and that's you're playing a Peyton Manning that's fifty percent of himself. It's not like he was, you know, anywhere near what he should have been. Yeah, but he wasn't to the point where he's about as good as Geno Smith. Well, a fifty percent Peyton Manning is not good enough to put a very mediocre Denver team through the playoffs. Yeah, but I'm, no, I'm just saying, but anyway. Um, you see what I mean? And then you play the Chiefs. The Chiefs were doing great at the time. They had such a great start. I still don't know how they, like, they just slowly spiraled. I think the the leaning towards the run too much really bit them in the ass. But oh, overall, throughout the year, as as they grew and they started winning, they they were blowing teams out by just winning both on running the football and passing the football, and then you had no idea what was coming at you. Yeah. Uh, now, defensively, I give them a B plus, and the reason for the B plus is they were giving up yards at an alarming rate, but they didn't break. They kept giving up field goals. They weren't giving up touchdowns. And most of the year that really helped them and it helped them in the Super Bowl most definitely. That one, Be The one play I told you earlier where they, they, they stopped Seattle and made them go for a field goal. That saved them. If that was a touchdown it would have been a very different game. Yeah, and that's that bend but don't break philosophy and that that, that style is what New England's played with for a very long time and it, it works if you get three instead of seven and your team is scoring seven and not putting up three you're going to win a lot of games and they they played well they had really good defense uh, they had Darrell Rivas they had Ninkovich they had Will Fork a B plus yeah now, now, special teams, I'm also giving a B plus. They had the best, one of the best kickers in the league, Steven Goskowski. They had a decent punter in, uh, I don't even remember his name. I don't either. And Julian, Julian Edelman returning punts and stuff. He returned one for a touchdown. I believe that was against the Broncos. Yep. And that's what basically uh, set that game's uh, fate. Exactly. And... They they were very good at you know doing that sort of stuff. So I mean I'll give them a B plus. Now coaching coaching I give an A plus. Huh. Th this whole season this whole season Belichick has made tons of adjustments at halftime and his team was never really 
out of it, minus two games. Yeah. Otherwise, this whole season, they were in every game. And it, 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 the greatness of the coaching can be studied by that Baltimore-New England game in the playoffs. They went and did something that very few teams would do and or try to do, and being down 14 twice and coming back. is a mark of a good coach and having a Hall of Fame coach and a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah. Now, overall... Yeah, I'm, I'm going A. They're the Super Bowl champions. I mean, all phases of their game worked really well, and, I mean, you have a you have a Hall of Fame quarterback, you have a Hall of Fame coach, anything's possible, and they're an A overall every year. So this year is no exception. They're, they got an A. There, there's really very few holes as a team on this team. Oh, I can already tell you one, but I'll give that. But after I'm done with my uh, grade, I want to say that one thing about about Deflate Gate, which you know, you th I think you already know. But so, do you have anything else to note, or should I start? You can start. All right. Well, I give the whole offense an A. Or actually, well, yeah, I give it an A, because I'll tell you what didn't give it an A+, plus, which I'll get to, because they did have, like I said, growing pains, set, figuring out what to do, but when they figured it out, they dominated most games, and like you said, were in it. But, if I had to grade each side individually, quarterback, A+, plus, the the throwing game, it was A to an A+, plus. I can't, I can't really tell you, because before Gronk was back, it was about a B, but then it just skyrocketed with him because he's a he's a big crucial piece to the passing game. Yep. He's that one receiver you can never cover for so long. You can't you can only hold him back. A lot of, of commentators say that, but it's true. You can't hold him back for long. You can try. All you can do is minimalize, and that's a good player. If they can't if you know you're gonna get something good out of him, that's better than nothing. But right. a anyway, the only thing that didn't I wouldn't give the, that I give a little lower grade for was uh, the running game, which when it was great, yes, I'd give it an A. I'm not just saying this because they got rid of Jonas Gray at the end, but I'm saying they got a a B because if it didn't work, it was really hard for, sometimes for New England to win. If their passing game was also shut down, it was just really hard for them to do anything. But I I'm not t being too hard on the run game. They still did. It still did its job, which was important. It did its job, but anyway, moving on to defense. The defense gets a B plus. I thought it did its job as well. Its secondary was what really stood out. The pass, ru uh, the rush game was hard because I believe they lost some of their players. I think they lost their defensive tackle. I forget his name during the uh, Bills game, the first Bills game. But I don't know. They lost a lot of. They had their fair share of injuries on defense, but I I think it's it was able to keep. It was able to to hold together and continue being dominating, and that was what net, what pretty much saved them from losing to Seattle in the Super Bowl. And coaching, I give an A plus as well. I pretty much have the same grades as you, Bill. Yep. Because I Bill Belichick did not. Like you know, most teams when they're having that bad turn, he stayed calm and he stuck to the game plan. And he is, he is, if not one of, if not the best halftime adjusting coach out there. And I don't give that award often a lot. But the only other right. coaches I could think of that adjust really good is just maybe Bill O'Brien. But remember, who did he teach under? Bill Belichick. Yeah, he. I mean, Bill. Bill O'Brien was good when he taught. When he was teaching or being a coach for, uh, st what was the college he was in again? Penn State. Yeah, Penn State. I knew it was <laughs> a New England state. He taught in Penn State, and and he worked with Bill Belichick. And he was good in both those places. But it makes sense here. But anyway, but you see what I mean? Yep. Bill Belichick had that. Uh, that he just was the. Grandmaster, I know I've made that reference already, but I'll make it again. He's a grandmaster of coaching, and I don't think anybody's gonna catch up to that level for I don't know how long. I think we'll we'll get a coach someday, and I really hope it's a team I like. It better not be fucking Green Bay, 
or another team I don't like. That's that's annoying. I'm tired of all those teams. But anyway, A plus for Bill Belichick, and finally A plus. I know you gave it an A, Bill. I give A plus because you won the damn Super Bowl. That is an A minimum. You already won an A. Super Bowl? That's like making it. That's like giving extra credit to round your your 95 grade to a 100. On a te- huh. on your on a test, you just got your fi- your final grade and you just rounded it up to a hundred. Perfect score. It yep. has loop. It has flaws. So while I give it an A plus, I did acknowledge the flaws, like the running game needed work, but it did everything work, clicked together, and did their jobs properly, and that's what won them most of their games and what led to them in the Super Bowl. You get an A an A plus plus by or something, just A plus by default if you won every game, but obviously that didn't happen. So, yeah, that's my grade. And anyway, I want to mention one thing to further prove the uh, whole thing about the flake game because we're not coming back to talk about this. So I want to get this out there. So, Bill, uh, let's see if you you should. I think you know this, but let's see. So, to, the thing is, um, Atlanta is under investigation <laughs> right now. <laughs> yep. You know I of know it. This. Atlanta is under investigation right now because apparently they're they are under suspicion of using artificial noise or crowd noise. Yep, for two years. For two Ow. whole years. But what? But why aren't we talking about that? Why are we still focused on the damn physics of a ball? Because you know why? It was to it was to get everyone's attention focused on the Super Bowl. But not just that. If you, if you have a villain in the Super Bowl and be like, oh my god, are they going to are they going to underinflate the footballs again? Let's watch. Mm-mm. No, but but also New England had their spy gate. This wasn't their first time under scrutiny. Even if it was right. some other if it was in any other team Nobody would have been talking about maybe for a day, but that's it. It would have been just one little minor trend on Twitter, and then it would have faded into obscurity like everything else. And then a few months later, like, oh, so that's what happened. Okay, cool. Let's move on. I I like how I like how Atlanta doesn't get the term "dirty team" for doing that, but the Lions because of Nadam Kinsu stomping on a Green Bay Packers leg. Yeah, and oh, and, and like I said. The Patriots are evil because their coach is evil. Look what he did before. We can never forget Spygate. Remember that. It has to be true. This is two times I in mean, a row. He must lose his job or be suspended for the Super Bowl. It, it, that was the stupid... I, I, I felt it was overly done. It was stupid. <laughs> in that... Really? What... If if you really think about it, if you lower the air pressure, meaning that the ball is lighter, guess what? It's on doing a heavy wind, which was not happen in that in that game because it was a really windy day. It was it was, the, it was like the beginning of the nor'easter waves. It it was going to flutter. It's not going to spiral correctly if you don't have a really rock heavy, you know, football. And you have a lighter football. It's going to it's gonna flutter in a strong breeze. And not, it's not gonna cut the through Colts the Colts didn't air even bracket. care because they they knew it doesn't matter whether the ball was inflated or not. We lost. They, you know what I mean? The Colts took their loss with honor, and they know like okay, what even if this is true or not, we still lost. You know what I mean? It's, it's it didn't help them play defense. They played no defense in exactly. that game. Exactly. So that's why they said it doesn't matter. They their defense couldn't stop. No, they couldn't stop because they couldn't stop uh, New England. They couldn't stop Legarrette Blunt, who shredded them. But it wasn't like the deflated football made you know Legarrette Blunt like two pounds lighter, and he was able to you know cut on a dime. Oh my God, I feel so much lighter. I should be able to cut now even better in a rainstorm. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. I just, I just found it utterly ridiculous. And it just goes and proves my point. Every team tries so- this crap. It just, you know, it, it depends what you hear about and what you don't hear about. Yeah, I never understood that shit, but it's okay. Either way, they're going to have to... They, 
I don't know, but Cra the Robert Kraft, the C or like the owner of the Patriots, said if this turns out to not be true, he demands an apology for the players. It's like that's a really bold thing to say. You know what I mean? Whether you're the guilty yeah. party or not, that's a really bold thing to call out. To call out the NFL itself and say, if you if you fuck up on this and it's just a, a drive for attention, you better fucking apologize to every player because, like, well, yeah, it's true. You're putting all of the, making all of them look bad, and especially Brady. Because Brady's a good player. You know what I mean? He's not a good. We've yeah. talked about it before. He's a good guy. And he proved he proved what he is in the Super Bowl. From coming back from 14 down. Well, he came with, back from 10 with down. These, with these properly inflated balls, which should have been the proper, the properly handled the entire way through the season. Why do you change the rules for the playoffs? For just one game. In the Super Bowl, you handle the footballs, and then at other times in the season, well... The teams can do that. No, uniformity with that. And I, I, now, I know people are going to say, oh, well, he doesn't believe in uniformity with the referees and for, you know, crews, but I want the best of the best being the referees. I don't want to have, you know, have the best head referee be stuck with a garbage crew that he has. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, so Bill. Bill? Yeah. Okay. So do you have anything else to say for this? Because I don't know if we have... I don't know if we have anything else to talk about. Just sad that this I, is about to go. I... I don't really have too much else to say. It's... It's... A sad time. It's the end of the year. No more football to talk about. No more football to watch. It's over. Till but what? But it, it's only over for another six months. Yeah, well, <laughs> we are gonna come back for one, like two shows, for before the draft and after the draft, and then we won't come back again until uh, the preseason. Yup, it, it's a sad time. The last thing football related is the Patriots having their parade, and that's in a couple days. But that's definitely not going I to affect. I won't be surprised if it us. gets delayed again. <laughs> Another <laughs> snowstorm coming through. Yeah, but um, I don't have anything else to say really. But I think it was fun. It was really fun doing this. I just really hope that all these teams do better. And really, I want Houston to go to the Super Bowl this year. Though, really, I want Detroit to. Because I, I want, want Houston to win in their place. I want, I want my Lions. That'll be for the preview show. That's like many moons from now. That yeah, probably. I'm really hoping for Dallas and Detroit for an NFC Championship. I don't care who hosts who. I don't. I think I think it's going to be virtually the same atmosphere. I I want a 14 and two Lions team, and I I, wanna, I, I can see that happening. I want like a I want like a like a eleven and five Dallas team again, which is going to be hard because I think New York's going to be knocking down the door. I think we're going to be getting the eighties, nineties era NFC East, which was very brutal, and it was just so hard to figure out who was going to the playoffs. You know what's going to be brutal? Watching the Chicago Bears defense next year. <laughs> Why you think they're going to come back, or they're just going to fail? <laughs> they're going to be terrible. <laughs> I hope so, Bill, for you, for you, the Lions' sake. The only thing I'm hoping for is that Seattle's le defense will like stagger a bit now that they lost their defensive coach because he's now the head coach of Atlanta. Yep, I mean, Seattle's losing pieces. So Yeah, so it's like this was their best chance to win the Super Bowl. Arizona's losing pieces. Detroit kept their defensive coordinator and Detroit is poised to make a good Houston make kept all their run. players, and I really hope yep. they decide on a quarterback, which, well, God, please go with Matt. I doubt. Yeah, I, I, doubt. I know you doubt it. We're only going to wait till preseason, but, well, it won't matter if they don't keep them because they're all under They're not. I don't think any of them are under contract anymore. They have to... That's, re that's really the big, the big thing to knock out is... 
find your quarterback and do they it. You gotta buy them all back, you know that. Like I think Case too. Case and uh Mallet need to get new contracts. Mallet's supposed to expire any minute now. If it hasn't already. And the same thing with Keenum. So they have to I think they would they might do what you're thinking, but they have to buy them both first. Oh yeah. But anyway. So Bill it was a it yep. was a fun year, man. Yep. Oh man. Oh, I can't believe it's done. Yeah, we're not gonna have much to do, but it's okay. I've got college to deal with, so I'll be fine. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah. Anyway, we'll see you guys in the draft, which will be a, a few months from now. I think in May, at the end of the semester. But if if you're not gonna watch that, I'll see you guys in the next season, the 2015-2016 season leading to the 50th Super Bowl. Oh, man. That's going to be fun. Well, every year of football should usually be fun. <laughs> Except when We're... Green Bay is apparently going to go win to see everything. That's not fun. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys next year. Yep, yep. peace. Oh, come on, Bill. You can say a better goodbye than that. Oh, bye! Oh, my God! All right, we'll see you guys next year.